Yes. They were detecting if I brought any nuclear material with me from Iran. I've told them before, I don't need to carry any nuclear material. I've gone to the ends of creation. I can produce nuclear material anytime I want the amount I want and put it back in again. And I wrote on my forum, because it was ridiculous what they did, I said, you don't need to go with a helicopter on top of my roof to see what I'm carrying. Knock on the door, come in, I come from Iran, I brought you some sweets and some toys for my children so you can come and play and eat something with us. I love it. I love Read it. Read my forum, everything is in there. I just found out about you two hours ago, so I think I've responded pretty quickly, actually. There's got to be people that you've taught that can proceed if, God forbid, anything happens to you. Is that true or is that... Read my books. Read my books on my forum. Let's talk a little bit about the other people that are trained. You're the head of this whole thing. You're the pioneer of it. No, no, no. I'm not the head. I'm just a thinker by a few years ahead. Okay. I'm not the head. If you want to know in more detail, I think a lot of people have to go back to the Iran Space Agency and the people of the government who are research-based because they're very advanced with it. But I cannot be touched. What well, it is, this is what I keep on explaining. The know-how and the technology and the knowledge has been fully transferred to the hand of the, not the Iranian government, but the Iranian research institutes. You understand? It's a big difference. Yes. Even though everything is controlled by the government, yeah? I do not collaborate or work with the government. I work with the institute, research institutes. I understand what you're saying. But there are a lot of people that feel that Iran is so tightly controlled that the government really has its tentacles in everything. So I know what you're saying, but the institute can still be controlled, just like here. The institute, yes, some institutes are. Of course are. they are. Of sure. course they are. Sure, sure. Of course. There has to be. Governments have to be in control of what's happening in their, gov- in, in their nations. Totally understood. Otherwise you, get these, yeah, otherwise you get these ridiculous people, terrorists, and the rest of it. No, no, governments have to be in control. They have to control a certain amount of knowledge leakage into public. Huh? But on the other hand, uh, as I said before recently, the biggest mistakes they made in respect to Cash Foundation or Cash Technology or my technology was that they left me too free to carry on and at the same time publish and release papers and knowledge. The cat is out of the bag. Let's talk about another application. Share another application with us that your technology and the know-how can remedy or can make better or totally different. Okay. I explained to you something. I'll be a so who Mr. Richard Branson and the CO2. Before you begin on CO2, I want to caution you that after 18 months of investigating climate change, I do not accept that CO2 is a cause of anything related to climate or climate change. Just so you know my perspective. But Can I tell you something? Yeah, but go ahead. It must be shocking to you. Hmm. It might be a shock to you. I agree with you. <laughs> I find it the biggest fraud that has been committed that has hijacked the environmental movement. But go ahead. Okay. Our CO2 doesn't do with the climate change. We didn't go for CO2 to do the climate change. Okay. The reason we went for CO2... It was something I wrote about it two years before I achieved it, was that we wanted to create matter, any matter, in a solid state at any temperature and pressure. Gases we never see in the liquid state or a solid state unless we increase high pressures or we apply high pressures or high temperatures. CO2 becomes solid at minus 60, 70 degrees or whatever. Yeah? Right. And it becomes ice. They use it in laboratories. We wanted to create CO2 as a solid at room temperature. So if you understand the implication of the CO2 or any other matter at room temperature, any other gases, means you have found the essence of creation. Means you can produce anything live anywhere in the universe. As I always say, pinch yourself. What are you pinching? Solid oxygen, solid nitrogen, solid carbon, solid hydrogen. We call it protein. But these are gases which they become solid under certain conditions and become part of our own being. I wanted to reach that point, and we reached that point through CO2 initially. So what we do, we capture the CO2 from the atmosphere in a very simple apparatus. We convert it into a solid matter. 
In my book, it says CO2, go on my site. It's a CO2 paper, read at the back. So what we did, we produced CO2 and then methane. And then I knew what they were, but we needed scientific confirmation that it's not all just talk. I called the University of Kent, the professors and the scientists in the University of Kent in Belgium who have the machinery who can confirm to me what this thing is. CO2 has a special characteristics when it goes into infrared uh, machines. So I called in the morning and I thought maybe they tell me come back in a few months' time if you have time. And the scientists were so surprised. Says, come straight away, 2 o'clock here, we'll test it for you. So we took our materials to the lab. They did Raman spectroscopy, they did infrared spectroscopy, they did everything, and we left the material with them. The next day they did more tests, and all the data and the graphs was copy of exactly CO2, but in a solid state. Now, what does this imply? This implies that within the next few years, a handful of years, we can develop computers which work at the same speed of human brain. We can develop tangible, soft, without dimension computers which are applicable and controllable as we think. In real time? Why do we need this? Is that what in you mean? In real time. Yeah, because it's a CO2 in solid state. In, it's the same as your brain. What is in your brain? Protein. So we don't need the linkages. We don't need all these things. So what, why do we need? The, the answer, why do you need computer this fast? In the space technology we develop in the near future, we will travel far faster than the speed of light. The speed of light, Einstein said, is all to the speed. Yes, he's correct. But in the matter environment, in the matter magnetic field of strength, but not in what they want, what we call transition, what they call a dark matter, or in what they call antimatter, we call principal matter. Principal matter, the speed of magnetic field is thousands of times faster than the speed of light, because the speed of light is at the bottom of the spectrum in the full length of the magnetic field. So we need computers that when we use the above the speed of light, that it can function. Our computers are useless. How can I fly above the speed of light when my systems work below the speed of it? <laughs> you understand? Absolutely. It's a just coordinate so system. So we are planning years ahead the future program that we wanted to get. Now, even the CO2 to me is meaningless because now I'm going into the stage of being able to control the magnetic fields of the, what they call dark matter, dark energy, what we call transition and the antimatter, what we call the principal matter. So we are working on my research is above what is known now, and that's what I'm writing new papers on the books about it. We are opening the gate into a new way of physical material, not history and writing a space program books. Now, what we can do? I have taken, I know how the CO2 is created in solid matter in the, spa in the, in the room temperature, I know how methane is done. This has taken me to the next step of my medical research. In a very recent past, people who are on my forum, they know because we announce things we do in advance sometimes. We have a lady who her toe has been amputated for a certain reason. Because of uh, blockage of the veins with no blood going through with the gangrene. So now we are trying to regrow the toe back to its original size and shape where the doctors in England wanted to amputate the leg from mid-upper leg because there was no blood going down for past five years, ten years. This is not uh, something which happened two weeks ago. So now we have the leg which was no blood going through. Now is bleeding like a pig every day because the doctors originally, when they did the first amputation, we said, we want to do this. The doctors collaborated. He knows what I do. He said, I'll play with you till you tell me what you want to play, but at the same time, I have to keep the ethics of the hospital. So now there was no blood coming because the same surgeon replaced the main artery of the leg five years ago to give the life to the leg at least for a few more years. He knew and that, that vein, that blood vessels is totally filled up with the calcium again, so it's blocked. He knew the, why the gangrene is coming in. We use the knowledge of CO2 making solid matters, how we can undo it. Now, 
the, when they did the op- first operation, when they did the amputation, they said the healing process, if it happens with this illness, it will be 6 to 12 months if it heals and no infection.